It's been over a year since EtherSX2 disappeared from the Google Play Store, but just when things seemed quiet, something unexpected dropped NetherSX2 Classic V 2.0. In today's video, we're not just checking out what NetherSX2 brings to the table, we're also diving into the best settings to get the smoothest gameplay possible. I'll guide you through the setup step by step, tweak performance settings for both low end and high end devices, and test out classic PS2 titles like God of War 2, Dragon Ball Z, and Need for Speed. Whether you're aiming for high resolution or just trying to get full speed gameplay, this video will help you make the most of NetherSX2. You no longer need to search for this app on third-party sites because it's now available on its official GitHub repository. The file is around 20 megabytes, so it won't take long to download. Once downloaded, simply tap to install it like any other APK. If this is your first time installing an APK manually, make sure to enable Install from Unknown Sources in your device settings. Now let's launch the app. We're going to see a welcome screen from this emulator. Just click on the next button and the next page is just going to give us some disclaimers and instructions. If you have time, you can read or click the next button. Now we are going to see the settings page. If your device is high configuration, at least Snapdragon 845, then you should select optimal slash safe default. If you have a low end device, then select fast.unsafe default. Enable the expand to cutout area to ensure the maximum screen area is utilized. Emulation screen orientation is landscape, aspect ratio stretch fill screen. UI language, obviously English, API OpenGL or Vulkan. It's up to you. Upscale multiplayer means it will increase or decrease your native display resolution, but I prefer to use 2X. Now you can click on the next button. On the next page, they're going to ask you to import the BIOS file, which we have already downloaded. So just select Import BIOS over here and navigate to the PS2 folder where you've placed your BIOS files. This one over here corresponds to the USPS2 console. However, it won't make any difference if you're using a BIOS file from a different region. As you can see, our bin file has been imported. Click on Next button. Now it will ask you to select the directory or folder where you place the ROM file or ISO file of the game. So just click on the plus icon over here and navigate to your PlayStation 2 folder. Disclaimer. The emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is not. I do not support or provide access to pirated games. Please use legal copies for your own safety. Then click on Next button. Our primary setup is complete and you just want to click on Finish. You can see our games are now displaying in the game Liberty. Some additional settings can significantly enhance your emulator experience. Starting with the app settings. In the first tab, you'll find options to display FPS, speed, resolution, and CPU or GPU information. These are useful for monitoring the overall performance of your emulator and identifying any bottlenecks. In the system settings, if your device isn't powerful enough, you should reduce the EE cycle rate to 50%, effectively underclocking the CPU. It's recommended to set maximum underclocking for all lower-end devices to improve stability. Another important setting is frame rate control. Certain games, such as God of War 2, are designed to run at 60 frames per second, but not all smartphones can handle that. In such cases, you can limit the frame rate to 30 FPS by adjusting the NTSC refresh rate to 30 Hz. This allows smoother gameplay without overburdening your phone's processor. In the general settings, if you have a high-end device, Vulkan is generally the best graphics renderer. However, if your device struggles with Vulkan, switch to OpenGL for better compatibility. The upscale multiplier is another key setting that affects visual smoothness. Try playing a few games at 1x or 2x resolution, and if your device starts lagging, you can scale it down to 0.5x native. The ideal setting can vary from game to game, so some experimentation is needed. Also, enable widescreen patches to enjoy a full screen experience in supported games. In the audio settings, set the interpolation mode to linear for the best balance between performance and sound quality. Then head over to the Achievements tab and enable Retro Achievements, which allows you to unlock achievements in supported PS2 games. This feature brings an extra layer of excitement and motivation to revisit your favorite titles. These settings apply to games overall, 
but sometimes you need to tweak them on a per-game basis. To do this, tap and hold on a specific game, then open Game Properties. From there, you can apply custom settings for that individual title. This is very important because for demanding games like God of War, you may need to lower the resolution for smoother performance. Meanwhile, less intensive games can often run at up to four times resolution without any issues, and you can switch to List to Grid mode by clicking this icon. You can notice that Games has no cover. We have to upload the game cover, so click and hold on Game and you can upload the cover from here. Let's start a quick game. As you can see, the game is going to launch within the Nether SX2 PlayStation 2 emulator. At this point, I would recommend switching your device to landscape mode as it allows for much better gameplay. The controller layout has also been refreshed, making gamepad support smoother and more responsive than ever before. For those who can't afford high-end emulators like RPCSX, NetherSX2 is the perfect alternative. That's it, guys. If you want to watch something like this, please like and subscribe to our channel. Join our Discord server. See you in the next video. Take care.